faith, who in Jesus Christ our Lord gave your blessing at the wedding in the Cana of Galilee. Be present here as Jonathan and Ashley come to be joined as husband and wife. Even as they've been drawn together in love for each other, now join them in a love born out of their desire to walk in your path. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I'd like to welcome you here today, after Jonathan and Ashley and their families, as you have come to celebrate together with them. We're gathered believing that God is present with us as we do celebrate. We're coming together in love. We remember, remember that marriage is a time when a growing love is made public, when two people share mutual promises before those of us gathered here and, most importantly, before God. And we do join in our prayerful support of you as you offer yourselves to one another. We celebrate your joy, your love, and all of your expectations. And we do pray for you the blessed presence of Jesus Christ, that whatever human weakness exists will be overcome by his forgiveness and his style of relationship. John, will you have Ashley to be your wife, to live with her, respect her, and love her as God intends with the promise of faithfulness, tenderness, and helpfulness as long as you both shall live? I will. Ashley, will you have Jonathan to be your husband, to live with him, respect him, and love him as God intends, with the promise of faithfulness, tenderness, and helpfulness, as long as you both shall live? Who presents this bride to us? Her mother. <laughs> Good save. There we go. Jonathan and Ashley have chosen a scripture that might be familiar to you today. It's uh, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's, it's uh, called the love chapter. And I think it's very appropriate. And so I'd like for you to listen to this as I read. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable. And it keeps no record of when it has been wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth comes out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. There are three things that will endure, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. That's, quite, that's a tall uh, description of love, isn't it? That is God's love. That is what they call, the Bible calls agape. That's a love that is described in the traits that we just heard. Love that is always patient and kind. Now, you all won't always be patient and kind. <laughs> but it's something to strive for. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It's interesting that it starts out and tells us what love isn't. Uh, it also says that it's not irritable. It keeps no record of when it has been wrong. I think that uh, goes back to our grandmothers and tells us that uh, we don't ever go to bed angry. We settle our differences and, and forgive. It goes into that and says this never keeps a record of when it's been wrong. So we don't hold on to those things that we perceive as injustices to one another. <coughs> it says that love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So that type of love is the type of God love that you need in your marriage. In Ecclesiastes it says that a three-strand cord is not easily broken. Now, I would say today that you two are two strands of that cord, but the third strand is God. And if you keep God in the center of your marriage, he will entwine you together with him, and it will never be broken. Because in this day and age, there are many things that attempt to, to tear your marriage apart. Now, Jonathan made an analogy before he came in, and it was the fact that he's not a bit nervous today, and that's good. He first said it was because he was shot at. <laughs> then I said, let's not do that. And then he said, but... When you've chosen the right one, there's nothing to be nervous about. So, and I was telling him that as in our counseling, and, and I've known you for several years, there's a chemistry. And when you know that a couple have strengths and weaknesses, your strengths and weaknesses complement one another. You complete one another. So this is what our prayer is for you today. And this is what we want as you go forward in marriage, the blessed presence of Jesus Christ in your marriage. You will always be joined together and only, as only he can. And that's what he's doing today. So as we think about that, my kid, get your flowers on. Join both your hands together and share your vows. I ask you to be my wife. 
my husband to live with you and to love from this time forward until death separates. I promise to be entertaining, forgiving, and seeking of your happiness as we grow together in God's will. something to present to us. And I think she wants to give someone a hug. These rings are in a circle. And this is a symbol of the never-ending love that you just promised one another. So every time you look at these rings, I want you to remind you of, these, of the love that you just promised you to And I also want to remind you that this love will only endure as you grow together in Christ's love. Love is born with the joy of looking at each other. It is then fed with the act of truly seeing each other, and then it culminates in the impossibility of separation. Jonathan Nashley, you've just sealed your vows and by the giving and receiving of rings. A promise between two people who agree that, they'll that they will commit themselves to one another throughout their lives. The most beautiful example of this partnership is the marriage relationship. And today you have committed here to share the rest of your lives together. Today you are also committing as a family. And this family will be symbolized by the pouring of three individual containers of sand. One represents you, Natalie. All that you were and all that you are and all that you will ever be. One represents you, John. All that you are, all that you were, and all that you will ever be. And the other represents you, Natalie. All that you are, all that you were, and all that you will ever be. As these three containers of sand are poured into the fourth container, the individual containers of sand will no longer exist, but will be joined as one. Just as these grains of sand can never be separated and poured again into the individual containers, so will your family be. After today, you will never be the same. For after today, you will say to the world, this is our family.
God is the source of all life and peace. We pray that Jonathan and Ashley will now be united in a relationship, blessed by your holy presence. When they make mistakes, help them to overcome it with self-giving love. When childishness creeps in, help them to beat that with maturing forgiveness. When misunderstanding enters, help them to seek out your wisdom and be united in a bond that will last for all time. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, since Jonathan and Ashley have uh, shared mutual promises of love and, and uh, profess before those of us gathered here that they'll live together as understanding mature persons in God's sight, I now declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jonathan, Yay! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present to you for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Adams. 